Hey everyone, it's Kai from WCC, and today we'll be looking at the Gold Paladin Mirror between Onoda Hiroki and uh, Loko Kiat. And um, it's pretty interesting, we'll be focusing on Game 2 here, because that's where a lot of the interesting action happens. Because um, Game 1 and 3 were just, they're all right, but not amazing, but Game 2 is where a lot of the random decision making and a lot of the the parts of the Gold Paladin Mirror really come shine. So, Loko lost the first game, so he's going first. Rides a Maligant, and that's okay. Um, and then Hiroki is going, going second. Um, in this matchup, you might think going first is amazing um, when Gold Paladin gets to high roll and absolutely destroy their opponent. That's the most amazing feeling. But in this matchup, that's not necessarily the case. If you cannot, if you cannot high roll much with Gold Paladin and you superior right up uh, and give your opponent damage, you are kind of allowing your opponent to come back into the game. You give your opponent damage, they can spear X, and then bam. Um, suddenly you are behind even though you went first. So look he just superior rides up. He goes uh, See how much let's see how much he wants to push he has a wonder So he's gonna just be able to get another Excel circle from that So one thing with uh, gold paladin as well is you have to be really careful what you ride with from wonders if you Decide to just randomly ride whatever you want. You're gonna find yourself not having ultimate stride fodder in the future so that's just something you have to be really, really careful of, and not doing it properly can lose your game. So we're going to stop here. Again, this is one of those uh, stopping analysis kind of things. If you don't want to watch the unstopping stream, just go to the original one on the Vanguard channel, and uh, that will you'll just be able to enjoy that in no commentary from me and uh, no stopping. So here we see Luke is going to make plays, okay? So he does the Gareth. He's attacking with Gareth into Gareth, and then... Hiroki guards it. Now, here is the situation, is that if Hiroki doesn't guard this and he takes one damage, then Loki has to decide if he actually wants to attack with Vanguard or not. Because if he does, and this is not an amazing high roll that he has right here, if he does, he is giving his opponent two damage, and that means his opponent, if he has superior ride, which, since he discarded a Bowman, I assume he has bo he has more Bowmans in his hand, and we can probably see it here on the edge. Um, if his opponent is able to spear it up to 3, he can immediately go to Spear X, and now he, like, Hiroki's ahead, then, in the GB race. Which means that he'll hit his Ultima faster than Luke, unless, um, Luke has, like, multiple heal triggers. So, he has to really decide here. So, attacking with Gareth first, I don't think is necessarily correct, but maybe he's planning that if Hiroki doesn't guards the Gareth, he's just gonna go all out and just bash his face. Um, but then, if Hiroki does guard, he can just deal one damage, which I think is what's going on right here. Um, he's just gonna... Hiroki doesn't guard this. Uh, likely it's pretty big. And then, Luke's gonna trigger. Uh, no, no crits. And then, here's where he'll stop. Um, cause... It's a good timing for him to stop. Doesn't know if his opponent can superior ride, and even if his opponent can superior ride, uh, there will be no strides, so that's fine. And if... He can't, then that's even better too. So Hiroki rides a Bowman's. Um, depend, let's see what he does. If he can superior ride up or not. Um, he can't, it doesn't look like he can. He calls out another Bowman's. And here he's probably just going to attack Rearguards. Because nothing else can hit anyway. Um, and you're going to see this a lot. You're going to see a lot of Rearguard attacks in this game. Because that's just that's just pretty much the Gold Palomir. Generate a lot of cards, a lot of things. And then just bash like bash really weakly to your opponent's regards and clear them out. And you see, so he puts the crit on regard. Uh, regard definitely does not attack Vanguard. You never want to give true damage to um, a gold paladin play. So even though Loke can stride this turn, Hiroki still doesn't want to give two damage to Loke because that means you open up a lot of plays. You can go into like Platinum Spear X more easily with just a few counter charges. Um, and then you also open up the possibility for your opponent to go Ultima, because he has two damage there already, um, and all he needs to do is to uh, not heal, which is a pretty decent possibility, and then Ultima will always be available to him. So, giving two damage in this matchup is really bad. And in Lurk's case, he is running Bobos, so um, even one damage is very, very scary. One damage can easily convert into an Ultima with a Brennius. Um, so Lurk is just going to ride up to a Spear X, uh, Pretty, just pretty normal play here. Since he knows his opponent cannot, uh, wasn't able to superior ride the turn before, there's definitely no G-Guards coming, so this actually opens up um, just the ability to just push damage uh, if he so wants to. Uh, now, one thing you have to consider is that if you push damage here, 
you are definitely opening up Ultima for your opponent, and they'll have a lot of counter blasts to work with while you don't have anything. And that that can actually lose you the game. So if you don't have counter blasts and your opponent decides to try to one shot you with Ultima, um, then you could just straight up lose because you can't Ultima until you get two damage. And if the only way you're going to get damage is from your opponent's Ultima, you better hope you live through that. So it looks like here, Loke will just push damage, and he gets a crit, which is pretty nice. It's going to put him to probably, uh, as opponent to like 5 damage, which just lets his opponent do anything he wants. Um, and uh, Hiroki's just deciding if he wants to guard this or not. He has one trigger, so it's 22 versus uh, it's, uh, 15 plus... Yeah, so that's 28. So it's like a 10k guard if he really wants to guard. Um, but while well, he decides to guard... Uh, could probably take it because in this well actually no you, you probably wouldn't want to take it if your opponent decides to go all ahead and bash bash you you want at least one damage available for you to take so you can kind of uh hope to get a trigger and shut down the entire turn. since excel 2 has been introduced to gold paladin um the power lines of gold paladin have really decreased so if you get one trigger you basically shut down the entire turn um before when people ran excel 1 although they didn't get that many amazing hands like you can do now with gold paladin um, and combo is hard. At least their regards still hit, hit something like your Wonder Ezels will hit 19, your Grade 3s on XL 1s will hit 22. So even if your opponent gets a trigger, it doesn't necessarily mean that nothing else is hitting. And um, yeah, so now Hiroki's in a pretty good position. Uh, he has the ability to double stride if he can, um, but if he can't, then at least he has Platinum Spear X available. And um, with. Oh, yeah, with, with Platinum Spear X, he has the opportunity to. Um, with Platinum Spear, yeah, he has the opportunity to maybe heal down, um, get stuff that he needs. Uh, anything, anything. With this CB, anything is possible. Anything is possible. So, he decides to ride an Ezel, uh, which is kind of meh, I guess, unless he has another Wonder Ezel coming up. Um, we can kind of speed through this. this gold Paladin turns do, do go on for quite a while. Let's kind of speed through it. Let's see how many Excel Circles he makes. Um, puts in the Brennius. Okay, yeah. Let's see what he calls out. Sagamore. So, uh, we're going to stop here. Sagamore, we took out Sagamore a long time ago. Uh, I think Sagamore is a pretty bad card. Uh, Solemn will attest to that. He, he will definitely hate that card because that lost him quite a few games. One thing is that Sagamore, although it lets you dig through your deck, nowadays you don't want to dig through your deck as much because that means you deck out. And deck out is a real big bad possibility um, in Gold Paladins. So, Sagamore is not that good, uh, but if... Hiroki's playing Sagamore, then okay. Sagamore does let you open up things like, yes, this Din Drain will let you uh, kind of counter charge more uh, or let you draw. Uh, and it's kind of kind of bad, I guess. He did, Maybe he didn't get another Wonder Wrestle. Um, at least I would have still gotten to Platina just to set up a Platina and um, also at least let you do one extra attack if you're trying to push damage. Uh, but if you're not, if you're only trying to farm hand, then maybe you. you don't really need the Platinum Spear X, because Platinum Spear X does chew up a lot of your deck and your Counter Blast. Uh, so, right now, your game plan as Hiroki, I think, is just to go Ultima. Um, get out of Providential Angel of Ultima and just kind of one-shot Ho, because you, you can do whatever you want with 4 damage. And, okay, he's given he's given Ho 1 damage, which is kind of wrong, in my opinion. Um, where is he attacking with Vanguard? If he attacks Vanguard, I don't think it's a great... Opportunity. So that, that's good. He attacks a regard. He's, gonna, he's gonna, probably going to keep, keep her at um, one damage. So uh, it's hard for him to do anything unless he draws a Bobo. That's kind of correct. I don't know if Hiroki actually saw the Bobos before or really factored that into his uh, decision. So passes the turn. Doesn't want to deal any more damage to her. Keeps it on one damage. Um, now, Mr. Mr. Loki is going to look at his hand. And this is, this is one of the interesting plays in the game. He's just going to pass. All right. So... Uh, Loki really wants damage. He wants at least two damage, so he can at least do something. So, he decides not to play anything, and, um, not to attack. Now, why wouldn't you attack? You'll probably want cards, right? So, if he attacks, he gives his, the opponent the opportunity to, uh, discard a heal trigger for G-God. And that means Hiroki can ultimate and win. So, Everything about that turn, by not doing anything, is just there to deny Ultima. And then if Hiroki actually wants to attack, he, ha he has to give it to the Vanguard. He has to attack the Vanguard and deal one damage, and then gives Loke the opportunity to um, 
Ultima from his end and probably win the game, right? So it's all coming down to this one Ultima play that they really want to do. Um, the only the only way that maybe Lowe could have played it better is if he could stride up to a Spear X and then just call more stuff um, in the back row. Uh, and then that will basically open it up to GB4. And then since he's running Bessock, that means only three G guards are needed to go into GB8. But I think his hand was just very terrible. He had a Raven head in his hand. Um, that was his only easy stride fodder. The rest was just zeros, ones, and twos. So if he wanted to stride, he would have needed to discard two, unless he was willing to give up the Raven hair. But in that situation, you might not. You want to keep the Raven hair for the ultimate stride. Um, so that's kind of okay. That's a, that's a very interesting turn. Um, and then now Hiroki is uh, on the spot. He has to wonder what to do here. And um, it's probably a situation he's never seen before. And we see that he's got a plan now. Um, one thing that he can actually do is he can just stride and pass. And then he confirms the ultima for his next turn. And that I think is probably uh, the correct play. So he decides to wander Ezel back into another uh, blonde Ezel to make more Excel circles. And draw a card. Um, one thing, he, he plays another one as well, so he's going straight to 5 Excel Circle. Now, here's, here's the thing. Here's one thing, is that if you Wonder Ezel a lot, it feels good having like a billion Excel Circles. Uh, but every one of them is you're kind of digging two cards from your deck. Because you ride an Ezel and then you draw a card. Um, and you might want to save these Wonder Ezels for a turn when you want a Brennius to get the correct Ultimate Stride. Um, otherwise, it's just, yeah, bad times if you can't. And you have all these... Like, uh, you have a lot of Excel circles, but if your opponent gets something like two triggers, two or three triggers on the defensive check from an Ultima, then those circles are really shut down or they're very ineffective. Another thing is that if you're um, pushing your opponent, and in uh, in Luke's case, Luke's at one, basically that entire front line gets shut down by a single dry, uh, damage check. So going through all these... All these um, Making all these Excel circles is not ne necessarily correct. And putting that Brennius on the front row, I think, is not correct, too. Because Brennius is one of your best decisions. And you can see Hiroki decides to... Uh, well, is he, is he, what is he doing? Um, I, I thought he passed. And if he passes here, that's correct. And then that's not the, that's not the correct play. Uh, this is actually a very, very weak play. So, attacking with this regard, he, he might be thinking along these lines, right? If I attack with Dindrain and he doesn't guard it, then I push through the rest of my turn, right? Um, then if he does guard it, then maybe I don't go through the rest of the turn. Or I still go through the rest of my turn anyway. But then if he's G-guarding it, then maybe I stop. So that could be what he's thought But like, basically, yeah, if his opponent gets like a damage trigger, that front row is shut down. Um, does he still attack with Vanguard? Maybe. If he does, then he just might straight up lose. Um, if he doesn't, um, attack with Vanguard, his opponent still has two damage, which is not what you want. And I think here, uh, who kind of jumps the gun a bit? I probably wouldn't have G-guarded, because that's immediately revealing your opponent that you have a three, like, GB3. So, if his opponent attacks again and gives a the damage, then, yeah, there's straight up an Ultima coming. But if he took the Din Drain... And, like, no damage check came out, or a damage check, it doesn't matter. Is that two? If he attacks with a Vanguard, then, then you can G-Guard and kind of bait him in giving you more damage. Because you can G-Guard with a Dismal that's, like, 15k, or G-Guard with, like, basically anything. It's 15. The Spear X will still hit, so you can at least take a damage while still getting, going up to GB3. And I think that would have been a better play. G-Guarding right now is a bit premature, and it kind of just indicates to your opponent what you really want to do. Um, you kind of want to bait him into those situations. Now, uh, Hogan didn't draw a stride fodder, so he has that Raven still in his hand, but he didn't draw it, so he decides to stride um, into... Uh, well, he discarded two to stride, and he's going to stride into, yeah, Helios. And this Helios will definitely attack a Regard. Opens up... Opens up... Uh, another Helios... And then that's he has enough for ultimate now. Attack Riga should be attacking the Brennius. Should be attacking the Brennius, I think. Um, draws on off the crit, and of course he's gonna let the second more go. Hits, yep. Bam, and there's a Bobo. So that Bobo is actually pretty big. Bobo means he can ultimate next turn with the Brennius, and um, 
Right now, Hiroki just needs to Ultima. If he doesn't Ultima this turn, then it's bad luck. Um, he does have the Brennius. He, he rides another Raven Hair Ezel. Um, so he strides and it's not an ultimate strike. So again, going from before, let's talk about if he kept a Wonder Ezel in his hand, that Brennius would be pretty useful right now if he still has a Raven Hair in his hand. Uh, Brennius goes in, uh, calls out Wonder. Wonder calls out a um, Wonder calls out the the Raven uh, the Raven Hair, and then he can discard for Raven Hair and go up. Now the other thing that I want to point out is he doesn't have two CB. Um, that's bad. It's bad. Um, just not really a good way around it. The, the Brennius could have helped in that he could Brennius in and counter charge and discard for Ultimate Strike. But if he doesn't have any of that, then um, yeah, that's. That's pretty terrible times for him. So, um, another thing is he's going to Glorious Raining. The Glorious Raining is not going to help you at all. What is he going to do? Is he going to put in all those uh, Grade 2s back? This is just... It's like an absolutely terrible position for Haruki. Um, one thing that he can kind of do is... Yeah, nah, there's, there's, there's not really much he can do. One, one thing he could try have done was like Planet Spear X, but he just doesn't have the counterbalance. I don't think he runs Malagant, so... Um, these counter charge options are quite limited. Limited. He might be out actually with all those din drains gone. Um, so yeah, pretty inefficient use of your din drain. Um, he's gonna attack, run into a, a crit trigger right there, and that's just that's just um, yeah, GG. This <laughs> this turn is just absolutely dumpster fire. Nothing. Uh, puts back the din drains. Maybe um, yeah, puts back the din drains. And is, is he gonna try to call them out to just get? Or, or call more din drains like there's just all, a bunch of these cards here that are just not very good i probably wouldn't call out that null i wouldn't call out that null either i'd probably keep the nulls um because you can g guard you can slay me into those nulls so yeah that was uh this was like an absolutely terrible turn um don't make these turns uh, it's it's just it's basically not achieving anything um i, I think he saw the bobo and he panicked because he knew that he couldn't stall anymore. He's going to eat an ultimate next turn. And that's it. Uh, he really needs two heals. Not just one. But I think at this situation it doesn't matter. Uh, because right now the one thing you have to be... Yeah, he has no deck. So even if he eats an ultima. And heals. He still can't do an ultima on his end. And he, he probably can't even stride. So. Eho goes into ultima. And this is going to be pretty pretty good ultimate turn for him. Um gonna call two and then put two or well, maybe he's out of crits maybe he's out of crits <laughs> yeah if he's out of crits then that's bad luck but all right so let me tell you the secondary option for ultima in the mirror so ultima when you think of ultima you go stack crits on top and then do three damage and kill your opponent in two hits cool idea the second thing is in the mirror is that since People go Platinum Spear X, or people dig through the deck really quickly with Wonder Ezels um, and Excel Circles. They're going to run out of deck really quickly. And the ultimate turn is then used to force your opponent to guard to a point where he can't ultimate anymore. And if he can't ultimate, what can he do? He, can't, he has to go into one of those bad strides, like uh, Glorious Raining, for example. Or they go into something like Spear X, but if your opponent has very low uh, card counts... Deck counts, he can't go into Spear X. Uh, he can't do Spear X Planner. Yeah, so he's, he's really stuck not being able to do anything. Um, so Ultimate is not always like a kill turn. It's also a way to kind of mill out your opponent. And there we see uh, Luke does not... He didn't have the second crit. So these are basically on two damage. So here's the thing. Even if Hiroki takes a damage, he's going to that problem where he just doesn't have enough cards to Ultima. Uh, he probably doesn't even have enough cards to do any attacks apart from like... Uh, just a twin drive So this is like checkmate for Hiroki. This is this is infinite checkmate this is a, There is actually nothing he could do the next turn unless he, sh he does like a, If he does like maybe three slay me flares he might make enough deck to at least do uh, One one more attack, but it won't be a big attack. It won't kill um, Lurk from two damage especially when you do these ultimate turns, you don't necessarily, especially when you're going for the mill win, you don't have to put two crits on top. You can put a heal or nulls 
and they will save you from your opponent's next turn, and then you can just play standard by just playing Platina, right? You still have Platinas. He did set, he did ride a Platina from before, so he is definitely getting a lot of multi attacks, and those attacks are there to just mill out your opponent's deck again. So this is really really checkmate from here. He d does have one slay me, but that actually doesn't matter in, in some ways. It's, it's not enough going back. Um, and yeah, these these are all. <laughs> I think these are all the motions from here. There is nothing, there is nothing you can do. So another one thing though, is since this is a best of three, um, you might want to. You don't always just give up the moment you lose, right? You might want to see as many, and that that's it. So you might want to see as many cards as you want from your opponent's deck, just so you have more knowledge of it uh, going into the next few games. So don't always give up, even though you know you're dead. Uh, try and get as much information out of that game as possible. Uh, but apart from that. Yeah, that game was pretty much checkmate when his opponent rode Ultima, even if he didn't have the three crits. Uh, one crit was enough to just, well, even no crits was probably enough to push his opponent um, out of the ability to Ultima, and that is basically your win condition. Uh, so, uh, interesting game too, uh, from both parties, and I think that's about it. Uh, game one and three, game one was pretty much the high roll, and game three, uh, there wasn't really much interesting stuff going on, except for a top deck, uh, top deck that really saved the game, so maybe I'll, I'll leave those for you to watch, um, at your time, but game two was the main interesting one with the, the big, the interesting damage deny plays and the dancing around, and the dancing that nearly didn't happen, so I hope you guys like this, the next video will definitely be about the ban list, um, and, uh, yeah, we'll talk more about that there. See you guys in the next video. Bye.